Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Let i be a subset of the positive integers, and suppose 1 is an L of i, and for all positive integers n, if n is an L of i, then n plus 1 is an L of i. Then i is equal to the set of positive integers. Now in this series, we are using a list of 10 axioms for the real number system, and I'll leave that list of axioms in the description below. Now, at this point, we have defined the positive integers as a subset of the real numbers. And the way we defined it was we first defined the notion of an inductive set. Let i be a subset of the real numbers. We say i is an inductive set if 1 is an element of i and for all real numbers n. If n is an L of i, then n plus 1 is an L of i. For example, the set of real numbers itself is an inductive set. And so we define the positive integers as the set of real numbers which belong to every inductive set. And from here, we prove that the set of positive integers is an inductive set, meaning we have that the positive integers is a subset of the real numbers. We have 1 is a positive integer. And for all real numbers n, if n is a positive integer, then n plus 1 is a positive integer. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now to start off the proof, we're first going to show that i is an inductive set. And to show that, we want to show that i is a subset of the real numbers. 1 is an L of i, and for all real numbers n, if n is an L of i, then n plus 1 is an L of i. Now to see how i is a subset of the real numbers, that comes from the fact that i is a subset of the positive integers, and the positive integers is a subset of the real numbers. So these two facts imply that i is a subset of the real numbers. Next, let's verify that 1 is an L of i. But we already know that 1 is an L of i. That's the first thing that we're given. And now we verify the second condition. So we're trying to prove a state about every real number. So let's consider an arbitrary real number. I'll call it n. And from here, we want to prove if n is an L of i, then n plus 1 is an L of i. So let's suppose that n is an L of i. Now, since n is an element of i, and i is a subset of the positive integers, then that tells us n is a positive integer. So now, we're in a position to apply the second fact that we are given. So, this statement works for every positive integer. So, in particular, it must work for the positive integer n. So, taking n to be n, we have if n is an element of i, then n plus 1 is an element of i. Well, we know that n is an L of i, so we can conclude that n plus 1 is an L of i. So we have shown for any real number n, if n is an L of i, then n plus 1 is an L of i. So we have verified the second condition. And so i satisfies all requirements to be an inductive set. Now remember, the whole goal has been to show that i is equal to the set of positive integers. And to show that, we can show that i is a subset of the positive integers, and the positive integers is a subset of i. Well, we know that i is a subset of the positive integers, so all that's left to show is that the positive integers is a subset of i. And to prove that, let's consider an arbitrary positive integer. I'll call it n. Well then, by definition of the positive integers, since n is a positive integer, this tells us that n belongs to every inductive set. So in particular, n must belong to the inductive set i. So we have shown if n is any positive integer, then n is an L of i. So that tells us that the positive integers is a subset of i. So since i is a subset of the positive integers, and the positive integers is a subset of i, that's enough to say that i is equal to the set of positive integers. 
And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. So this is one way of phrasing the principle of mathematical induction. But this isn't the way we are typically going to be using it in practice. But rather, we're going to be using it in the following way. Suppose we are trying to prove a statement P holds for every positive integer. And suppose we have shown that P holds for one and for every positive integer N. If we assume P holds for N, then we can conclude P holds for N plus one. Then this is enough to conclude that P holds for every positive integer. And the way we can justify this strategy is by applying the theorem that we just proved. And the way we do so is as follows. We first consider the set of all positive integers such that P holds. And we'll call the set I. Now the claim is we can show that I is equal to the set of positive integers using the theorem we just proved. And to verify that, we wanna show that I is a subset of the positive integers, one is an element of I, and for all positive integers N, if n is an element of i, then n plus 1 is an element of i. Well, we know that i is a subset of the positive integers that comes directly from how we've defined i. If we consider an arbitrary element in i, then that element must be a positive integer. And to see how 1 is an element of i, well, we know that 1 is a positive integer, and we know that p1 is true, right? Because that's what we're assuming. Now let's verify the second condition. So to verify the second condition, let's consider an arbitrary positive integer n, and let's suppose n is an element of i. Well, since n is an element of i, that tells us that p of n is true. And now let's use our second assumption. We know that the second statement works for every positive integer. So in particular, it must work for the positive integer n. So we have if p of n is true, then p of n plus 1 is true. Well, we know that p of n is true. That's what we have here. So we can conclude that p of n plus 1 is true. And since p of n plus 1 is true, that tells us n plus 1 is an element of i. So we see for any positive integer n, if n is an element of i, then n plus 1 is an element of i. So that verifies the second condition. So by this theorem, we can conclude that i is equal to the set of positive integers. And from here, we can show for all positive integers n, p of n. And to prove that, if we consider an arbitrary positive integer n, well, i is equal to the set of positive integers. So since n is an element of the positive integers, that means n is an element of i. And since n is an element of i, that tells us that p of n is true. So we see if n is any positive integer, then p of n is true. Right, and that is exactly what we wanted to show. So this is the argument that justifies us that we are allowed to use this strategy to prove that a statement holds for all positive integers. Right, it really just comes from the theorem that we just proved. This first statement is often called the base case. The second statement is often called the induction step. And if we've proven both the base case and the induction step, then we say by mathematical induction, we have shown for all positive integers n, p of n is true. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.